India, now the world's most populous country, has long dreamed of becoming the next China, or even surpassing it. Fast-growing cities, booming technology, and massive infrastructure projects. India wants it all. But there's one plan that has captured the imagination of its leaders for over four decades, and yet it has barely moved off the drawing board. This is India's ambitious water diversion project, a vision to take water from the water-rich north and deliver it to the dry south and west, transforming agriculture, cities, and millions of lives along the way. A plan so vast that it's worth $170 billion, stretching thousands of kilometers, involving hundreds of reservoirs and dams. And yet, after 44 years, almost nothing is operational. Meanwhile, just across the border, China has already completed one of the largest water diversion projects in human history, delivering billions of cubic meters of water to millions of people in need. So why has India, with all its ambition, struggled for decades to turn a bold vision into reality? What hidden obstacles have kept this dream locked on paper? In this video, we're going to dive into the story behind India's stalled project, uncover the political, financial, and environmental challenges, and see what lessons can be learned from China's remarkable success. Buckle up. This is a story of ambition, power, and the enormous challenges of moving water across a nation. To understand India's ambitions, we need to see the bigger picture. India isn't just a country with a growing population. It's a nation with massive potential and enormous challenges. Over the past few decades, India has watched its neighbor China transform itself with projects that seem almost impossible. Towering skyscrapers, high-speed rail lines that cut travel times in half, and colossal infrastructure projects that reshape the landscape. One lesson India seemed eager to learn from China is this. Bold projects, done right, can change a country's destiny. Among China's most famous achievements is the South to North Water Diversion Project. This isn't just a dam or a canal, it's the longest water diversion project in the world. It moves billions of cubic meters of water from the south, where rainfall is plentiful, to the dry northern plains. It connects multiple river systems, supports millions of people, revitalizes farmland, and even replenishes depleted groundwater. Simply put, it's a project that changed China. India looked at this and thought, why can't we do the same? Why can't we harness our water resources to solve regional shortages, boost agriculture, and support industrial growth? The answer, it turns out, isn't just engineering. Turning such a vision into reality requires more than concrete and canals. It demands careful planning, political alignment, massive funding, and social cooperation. India's desire to follow China's footsteps is clear, but the path ahead is far more complicated than anyone imagined. In this video, we'll explore India's attempt to replicate China's water diversion miracle, see why progress has been painfully slow, and uncover the lessons hidden in four decades of ambition, planning, and delay. India's answer to its uneven water distribution was nothing short of ambitious. The government envisioned a network that could move water from the water-rich northern regions, like the Gangetic Plain, to the parched south and western areas, including Rajasthan. This wasn't just about building a single canal or reservoir. It was a plan to link multiple rivers, construct hundreds of reservoirs, and create a massive inland river network spanning the entire country. The scale of the project is staggering. At the time it was revived, estimates put the cost at around $170 billion. To put that in perspective, this is almost half of India's total GDP in 2022. The plan was proposed more than 40 years ago, yet today only one small branch line has been completed and even that has not been fully put into operation. Imagine trying to connect dozens of rivers across states with different governments, hundreds of dams and reservoirs, and billions of cubic meters of water to move. This is not just an engineering challenge, it's a logistical and political nightmare. Yet despite these hurdles, India's vision shows how bold and far-reaching its ambitions are. The project, if completed, could have transformed agriculture, industry, and urban life in the driest regions of the country, but ambition alone isn't enough. As we'll see next, turning this vision into reality has proven far more complicated than anyone anticipated. So here's the big question. Why has India, with all its resources and ambition, struggled for more than four decades to implement this massive water diversion plan? After all, the vision is clear, the need is urgent, and the benefits could be transformative. Yet, despite repeated proposals, billions in projected investments, and decades of planning, the project remains largely on paper. 
This isn't just about technical difficulty. The challenges are deeper, more complex, and surprisingly human. They involve politics, money, geography, social resistance, and even international relations. Each of these factors has slowed progress, creating a tangled web of obstacles that no blueprint alone can solve. In the coming sections, we'll unpack these challenges one by one, while comparing India's struggles with China's remarkable success in moving billions of cubic meters of water across an entire nation. By the end, you'll understand why India's dream is so hard to realize and whether it could ever become a reality. While India's plan struggles to leave the drawing board, China has already completed one of the most ambitious water projects in human history. The South to North Water Diversion Project is actually the longest water diversion system in the world, designed to move water from the wet south to the arid north where cities and farms desperately need it. The project has three main routes, the East Line, the Middle Line, and the West Line. The East Line starts in Jiangsu Province and winds through five provinces before reaching Tianjin, covering about 1,200 kilometers and transferring nearly 15 billion cubic meters of water annually. The Middle Line starts from the Danjiangku Reservoir and flows over 1,500 kilometers, supplying water to Beijing, Tianjin, and surrounding regions with a similar volume. The West Line, still under development, is planned to cover 1,751 kilometers and carry another 14 billion cubic meters. China began construction in 2002, and by 2014, the first phases of the East and Middle Lines were operational, just 12 years later. The total investment reached roughly 10 trillion yuan, but the payoff was immense. Water now flows to regions that once faced chronic shortages, supporting agriculture, industry, and daily life. China's success provides a real-world benchmark for India's ambitions. It shows that with coordinated planning, sufficient funding, and strong governance, a country can reshape its water landscape on a continental scale. But as we'll see, replicating this feat in India is far more complicated than just copying blueprints. China's South to North Water Diversion Project isn't just impressive on paper. It has delivered real, measurable results. Since the first phase of the East and Middle Lines became operational in 2014, the project has transferred over 70 billion cubic meters of water. That's enough to supply clean water to more than 176 million people across seven provinces and municipalities. The project has also revitalized farmland and rivers that were once parched. Groundwater levels, previously overexploited in northern China, have recovered by over 5 billion cubic meters, reducing the risk of land subsidence and water shortages. Entire agricultural regions that faced recurring droughts now see consistent irrigation, allowing crops to thrive. In essence, China's project has transformed the water landscape of northern China. Cities, farms, and ecosystems that once struggled to survive now flourish. This tangible success makes India's stalled plan even more striking. If China could achieve such results in just over a decade, why has India, with similar ambitions, struggled for more than 40 years? In the next section, we'll explore India's unique water distribution challenges to understand why implementing such a project is so much harder there. India faces a unique and challenging water situation. Unlike China, where the south is wet and the north is dry, India's water abundance is concentrated in the north, while the south and west struggle with scarcity. The northern Gangetic Plain, home to major rivers like the Ganges and Yamuna, receives heavy rainfall thanks to the Himalayas blocking monsoon clouds. Some areas get over 1,000 millimeters of rain annually, and in some years it can reach 2,000 millimeters. The Ganges alone carries about 507 billion cubic meters of water annually, and the Yamuna adds another 550 billion cubic meters, together accounting for nearly 60% of India's surface runoff. In contrast, the Southern Deccan Plateau struggles to capture enough rainfall. Its lower elevation means it misses much of the monsoon, and being close to the equator, it also experiences high evaporation rates. Average annual rainfall here is only 500 to 800 millimeters, making water scarce for agriculture, industry, and cities. This stark imbalance creates enormous pressure on society and the economy. Northern India has water in abundance, but the regions that need it most remain dry. Solving this imbalance isn't just about digging canals. It requires moving massive volumes of water across thousands of kilometers while managing ecological, social, and political challenges. Understanding this imbalance is key to seeing why India's ambitious plan has faced decades of delay. 
India's ambition to move water across the country isn't new. It dates back over 40 years. As early as the 1970s, planners began envisioning a network that could connect the country's major rivers, build hundreds of reservoirs, and create a comprehensive inland river system. By 1980, the Indian government formally proposed what became known as the Inland River Networking Plan. The plan was enormous. It aimed to dig 14 river channels in the Himalayas, 16 river connections across the southern peninsula, construct dozens of large dams, and build thousands of kilometers of canals. The goal was simple in theory. Take the abundant water from the north and deliver it to the water scarce south and west. But the execution was anything but simple. The project was divided into three phases, with the idea that each phase would gradually improve water availability across the country. In theory, it could have revolutionized agriculture, supported cities, and even stabilized regional economies. In fact, India proposed this plan even before China began its south-to-north water diversion project, showing just how forward-thinking the idea was. Yet, despite this early vision, progress was slow. Decades passed with little tangible construction. And even when small parts of the network were built, political, financial, and social hurdles prevented them from becoming fully operational. This early history sets the stage for understanding why India's grand vision remains mostly unrealized even today. One of the biggest obstacles to India's inland river network isn't engineering, it's money. Back in 2001, India faced a severe drought that reignited interest in the water diversion plan. At that time, the estimated cost of the project was around $110 billion. To put this in perspective, India's total fiscal revenue that year was less than $50 billion, and the country's GDP stood at just $485 billion. In other words, the project would have cost more than double what the government collected in taxes that year, an almost impossible financial burden. As decades passed and India's economy grew, the cost estimates continued to rise. By 2022, the Inland River Interconnection Plan was projected to cost $170 billion, roughly 44% of India's GDP. Even with a growing economy, allocating nearly half of the country's annual economic output to a single project is a staggering challenge. This astronomical price tag helps explain why, despite the urgency of the water shortage problem, India has struggled to move forward. Funding such a massive infrastructure project requires not only government commitment, but also long-term financial planning, private sector involvement, and careful risk management. Without these, even the boldest visions can remain stuck on paper. Even if India could somehow find the billions needed to build its ambitious water diversion network, another challenge emerges, politics and the distribution of benefits. India is a federal country, which means individual states have significant control over their own resources. Water is one of the most sensitive of these resources. Northern states, which are naturally rich in water, are hesitant, some would say fiercely protective, of sending their water south or west. From their perspective, why should they give away something they need themselves? The situation is further complicated by India's massive population. Northern states alone account for over half the country's people. Transferring water to distant regions could create fears of shortages, hurting agriculture, industry, and households. Local governments are naturally cautious, sometimes blocking or slowing federal initiatives that could reduce their control over water. Even on the ground, ordinary citizens have reacted strongly. When the first phase of the river interconnection project was completed, it triggered protests from farmers worried that their land and irrigation systems would be affected. These demonstrations became the largest farmer protests in decades, stretching for months and drawing national attention. The result? The project, though technically finished, has not been officially put into operation. This illustrates a critical lesson. In India, large-scale infrastructure isn't just about engineering or money. Success also depends on negotiating interests, building consensus among multiple states, and managing social expectations. Without these, even the boldest plans, like transferring billions of cubic meters of water, can remain stuck on paper for decades. India's water challenges don't stop at its borders. Many of its rivers flow across countries, creating a delicate web of international dependencies. For example, the Ganges and Brahmaputra originate in India, but flow downstream into Bangladesh. Any large-scale diversion or dam construction upstream can dramatically reduce water availability downstream, 
affecting agriculture, drinking water, and ecosystems in neighboring countries. One notable example is the 2009 proposal to build a dam on the Burgla River, part of India's Inland River Interconnection Plan. While this dam could have helped move water to water-scarce regions, Bangladesh, which lies downstream, raised strong objections. The concern was simple. Diverting water upstream would threaten their farms, fisheries, and local communities. The dispute even became a political issue within Bangladesh, with opposition parties criticizing the government for being too weak on India. India's leaders quickly realized that pursuing such projects without diplomatic support could damage critical trade and political relationships. Many Indian companies rely on Bangladesh as an export market, making the stakes even higher. In the end, to avoid escalating conflict, the dam and parts of the larger river interconnection plan were shelved. These diplomatic challenges show that water isn't just a national resource, it's a shared lifeline. Managing it requires careful negotiation with neighbors, balancing domestic needs with international obligations, and ensuring that big infrastructure projects don't create bigger political problems than they solve. When we look at China and India side by side, the contrast is striking. China, with its South to North Water Diversion Project, moved billions of cubic meters of water across thousands of kilometers in just over a decade. They coordinated between provinces, secured massive funding, and managed social and environmental impacts with centralized authority. The result, a transformative project that benefits millions and reshapes entire regions. India, on the other hand, has faced decades of delays despite having the vision first. The challenges are multidimensional, financing a $170 billion project that approaches half the national GDP, navigating the politics of states protective of their water, managing farmer protests, and negotiating with neighboring countries like Bangladesh. Unlike China's centralized approach, India's federal system means states can slow or block projects, and social resistance can bring even partially completed work to a halt. The lessons are clear. Mega projects aren't just about blueprints and engineering. They require governance structures that can coordinate across regions, long-term financial planning, social consensus, and diplomatic finesse. India's experience shows that ambition alone isn't enough. Without strong coordination and cooperation, even decades of planning may not translate into action. So the question remains, can India realistically replicate China's success? Or will this bold vision remain for now a plan on paper? The answer depends on how the country addresses these intertwined financial, political, and social challenges. India's ambition to emulate China in building a massive water diversion network is clear and impressive. For over four decades, planners have envisioned a project that could transform the country, moving billions of cubic meters of water from the water-rich north to the parched south and west. Yet, despite this vision, decades of delays, skyrocketing costs, political disputes, social protests, and diplomatic complications have kept the project mostly on paper. China's success with its South to North Water Diversion Project shows what is possible. With strong governance, coordinated planning, sufficient funding, and careful social management, even a project of almost unimaginable scale can be realized. India's story, however, highlights the challenges of turning grand visions into reality in a complex, diverse, and democratic society. The question we're left with is a compelling one. Can India overcome these financial, political, and social hurdles to finally bring its dream to life? Or will this ambitious project remain an idea for future generations to ponder? If you found this deep dive into India's water ambitions and China's successes fascinating, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. We regularly explore stories of massive infrastructure, geopolitical challenges, and the incredible projects that shape our world. Don't miss the next story. We promise it will be just as eye-opening.